This is episode 19 of This Makes Me Happy. Today's episode is a little different. I'm talking to my friend, Jocelyn Park, and normally to my guests, I give them a little introduction and a walkthrough and ask them if they have any questions. Then we stop and we go into the conversation where I start with a question, what makes you happy? With Jocelyn, we were having so much fun catching up and that catching up went straight into the topic of what makes Jocelyn happy. So we decided instead of stopping and starting again to just keep going. So we didn't do the introduction till the very end. Uh, We didn't do the general prompt, what makes you happy, but it was such a great conversation and there was so much laughter and so much fun that we decided to just keep going with it. Jocelyn is a writer, a traveler, an artist, a designer, and community builder. She is a dreamer and achiever wrapped into one. Professionally, Jocelyn is a designer, a project manager, and the founder of Lancaster Transplant. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to This Makes Me Happy, a podcast about people and what makes them happy. I'm your host, Bernardo Margulis. I'm a designer, art director, and educator, and I'm the principal of This Makes Me Happy a design studio where I help my clients with branding and visual communications. I'm very happy to present This Makes Me Happy, the podcast, where each week I chat with a different person about what makes them happy. My guests come from all walks of life, and each of them shares their own personal happy stories. Join us every week for a unique conversation. Because I had this list that I wrote a while ago that I found while I was purging my office and I feel like well I was I this this one day I was purging just a short little story about this I uh I was texting a friend after he was he was like oh do you want to hang out I'm like no you know I'm in my office I need to purge and I have two offices now I have the office that I'm sitting in right now that's for my business and then I have my office at home where I I write and you know get get stuff done and be messy and um I was like, I kind of feel like a hermit crab right now, moving my shell. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, is it moving everything out? I'm getting into a bigger shell, I'm moving it around and like piling stuff. And also I feel like sitting with like my big claw in front of my face, keeping me safe <laughs> <laughs> from everything outside, blocking everything out. But he told me, he was like, you know what? You don't want to block everything out. You just want to block out the bad things and protect yourself mm. that way. And I'm like, okay, all right, okay. So, <laughs> anyway, all right. So tell me about your about your list. Well, I was uh, talking about this hermit crab experience. I found this list of things. It's it really is titled "Things That Make Me Happy." Awesome. I know when I wrote this, and it's out of a book that I've had for a while. <laughs> so this list entitled "Things That Make Me Happy." And also, side note, this makes me happy before I read this list. At the bottom of the list is an email, and the email is burndownthe-internet at gmail.com. <laughs> and I have no idea whose email address it is, so I was like, I'm just going to email them. <laughs> Did you? No, not yet. <laughs> I'll let you know what happened. <laughs> oh. So, all right, the things that make me happy. Number one. Actually, I'm not going to number them because there's more. (laughs) There's a lot. (laughs) Drinking coffee out of my favorite mug. What is it? What's your favorite mug like? Well, see, I go. (laughs) It depends on my mood. (laughs) So, so I don't know which favorite mug was my (laughs) mug. But, but like, I have. So, story about my favorite mug is. Like anytime I have a mug that I feel is my own, I get really grumpy when anyone uses it. So when I was at a co-working space and someone used it, cause like I washed it and then they took it. I'm like, where's my Aries? Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? So, um, yeah, I have a few, I probably have five mugs that I cycle through right now. I've been drinking out of this one that says shunk PA. Uh, and it has a bear on it. It's uh-huh. from this little podunk town in Pennsylvania where there's like 2,000 people. So that's my favorite mug at the moment. And that uh, makes me happy because I remember where the mug came from. <laughs> <sighs> what else is on the list? You know what? Okay, Go right. over it and then I'll ask you questions about it because I'm having okay. so much fun listening to all this. <laughs> it's going to be good. Um, so, so severe thunderstorms like we've been having. A breath of fresh air. Surprises. 
music in the morning, making a friend laugh. And you just made me laugh a few times. <laughs> I love laughing. <laughs> um, animals and their bizarre ways. Uh, a shower. Had one of those today. Very happy. Swimming holes. My friends. My family. Yoga. Hikes. Bikes. Writing. Drawing. Creating. And living in the moment. And then add this one to the list. Emailing, burning down the internet. <laughs> so I cheated a little bit and I looked up who it is and I'm not going to tell you because I want you to try it out. And I want you to report it back. <laughs> Wait, you know who, so you know who it is? I don't know. I don't know the person, but I cheated a little bit and I looked up who the person is. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward if you're like hey <laughs> i was on this podcast this morning and uh <laughs> i found your email address on my thing the list that makes me happy who yeah. are you and why why were you written on this list yeah i'm like i'm wondering if i should email this person and be like hey heads up or probably even better just just let you do it and then report back because that'd be so it. much fun i'll send you I will, I will update you i'll send you the email that i send send this person and uh facebook does say you and i are a mutual friend of this person so it's really? definitely someone in your life or at one point in your life really <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait so, there we have this person in common no no you are a common person for that person and me so you are definitely her facebook okay. friend or his facebook okay. friend oh you just gave it away it's the girl huh or a boy <laughs> 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 maybe it's a feisty punk rocker uh, that would make me happy I'll give you this you're being sexist because it's actually a girl <gasps> or a young lady a woman it's a woman <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be sexist or ageist or, or, or any of that <laughs> what if it was an old woman that would make me really happy oh so I gave you two things I gave you it's a lady oh, and it's a young lady and you gave me three things. I can find them on Facebook. Yes, you can. Oh. Um, there are other easier <laughs> ways of finding who they are, but I'll let you email them first. And okay. I, hear I guess I'll it. just go with the old-fashioned send you an email. <laughs> I don't know who this is. I love that sending an email is the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I, You know what makes me very unhappy? What? <laughs> Facebook messages. I hate Facebook messages. Wait, I think I've sent you Facebook messages. I'm sure you probably have. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did but... it take a really long time to answer them? I don't know. I, I, probably because I... I never answered them. <laughs> Actually, no, we haven't sent Facebook messages to each other. We've only emailed. Oh, and... that, see, that makes me happy. And you know yeah. what else makes me happy? Mail. Ma snail mail. <laughs> snail mail. <laughs> yeah, a mail mail makes me happy, too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> What's what's the best snail mail you've ever gotten? Ooh. The one that sticks out right now is when I was living in in Australia and I was doing my masters there and my mom sent me uh this was when I I had moved into a house. I got I'd actually made friends there, you know, <laughs> like it was like 10 weeks after I got there and um I finally had a group of friends and a house to live in and my mom sent me like hey i've heard you moved card <laughs> and i was like yes i did i moved in i moved countries and i moved into a new house <laughs> and how did she find out uh, randomly um, or did you tell her no i told her i was moving <laughs> um, that, that sounded very disappointed uh, like she <laughs> read my mind and surprised me um so it was even more unexpected because you did tell her and she was like, oh, hey, I heard this. Yeah, uh, it was like, because I don't know, there's something about being that far away. Well, you know, because you are from far away. So like being that far away and feeling so disconnected from other people yeah. to get something as normal as like a mail, like a piece of mail and a card from your mom. Yeah. And she always actually... She always sends me cards like she'll send me Valentine's Day cards and Halloween cards and birthday cards 
She sent me a rebate check last week. That was exciting. <laughs> like from, from something you purchased or did she? Yeah, she... From, uh, from getting my oil changed. I guess somehow my, my address is still registered to my parents' house. And like my only response is like, oh, maybe I should change that. Like, I guess I need to change that. I've, I've lived in Lancaster for four years now, so... How far they're they're also in PA, right? But how yeah, far are they? They're still in media, so it's about an hour and a half away. And I go home maybe once or twice a month. Mm-hmm. My parents come out every once in a while, I guess. But we also go to the Hershey Hotel, my mom and my sister and I, and go get spoiled for Ooh. a couple of days. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, it's awesome massages and you get to sit around and drink hot chocolate and eat muffins all day it's fabulous <laughs> how often do you do that um twice a year once we go with just like my mom my sister and the other time it's usually um like a few aunts and cousins we do like a women's retreat sort of thing oh nice so all my family is pretty local so that's very nice and it's probably good after being in australia for two years and being so far away yeah, they're part of the reason I came back. My my parents actually came to visit me in Australia and my best friend. And that was, I just, that was awesome. But I miss Australia too. I go through periods of homesickness for different places where I've lived. Uh, I don't miss, well, I kind of miss. Wait, hold on. I You are going to say a sentence and I'm going to get very mad at you, but finish it. <laughs> I don't miss Philly, but I kind of miss Philly. I was there two weeks ago for uh, a show at the Boot and Saddle, which Uh was fabulous. And um, I went to go see the Fruit Bats. Have you heard of this band? No. Oh, my God. That made me happy (laughs) so much. um, They helped kick off like the folk rock indie genre in the 2000s. Uh, the lean singer was in the shins and ugly Casanova and a few other like, you know, super hipster bands. Their songs are really fabulous. They're just, it's just beautiful. So I went with my best friend and her husband who is vicariously like through her, my best friend, you know, we all hang out and the next day we go to South street and I just could not believe how much Philly has changed since I lived there or grew up outside of it. You know, like South Philly is actually a place you want to walk around now. When was the last time you were here before that? Um, I mean, I probably go to Philly a couple times a year. I was there in November, I think in South Philly. And I was, I was really very unhappy because I couldn't park anymore. You used to be able to park wherever you wanted in Philly, and now you can't because it's too hip. Now you have to go to South South Philly to park so you can go to South Philly. Exactly. <laughs> to walk 20 minutes to park <laughs> far away. So, yeah, that was – I mean, Philly's Philly is a thing. I, I think I was mostly in shock of how much things changed. I'm actually writing a blog post about it, about being homesick or, or like, what that idea – of homesickness is, you know, you can go back to where you grew up at, like five years later and nothing could be the same. And it's kind of a shock. It's like, whoa, all right, all of this happened without me, you know? But if you make your home wherever you are at the present moment, you can watch all that stuff, uh, like, change gradually and really take it in. But you're, you're making Lancaster not only your own home, but you're making home for other people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So is that part of like you creating it and, you know, yeah, I guess like, so I, I don't know when this thought process started, but it's like creating my own reality. I I mean, I don't think I I don't live in, in a a world with that's, well, no, I guess I do. I was going to say it's all shiny and rainbows and, and, and unicorns and stuff like that. Like I am a very positive person and optimistic Um, But I'm also very grounded and spiritual and I want, you know, I I want to create a a place and a space for myself and I know how important it is for me. So it's important for me to be able to create that with everyone I interact with. You know, I, I had a coffee with someone this morning that I hadn't seen in two years and we just, 
reconnected and I didn't know how badly I needed that conversation because I was able to tell her what I was going through and she was able to tell me what I was like what she was going through and and hear me out I left feeling so much better than when I had entered in there you know so I don't know if I actually answered your question or just went off on a rant sorry <laughs> <laughs> but I feel this whole conversation is a wonderful <laughs> positive happy rant so we're yeah <laughs> it's good yeah and and you know like i i created this place and this space in lancaster for myself because it's something that i i saw everywhere i ever ever lived you know and i realized that no one else was going to do it for me so i've been really in this but I call it a business of making people happy like so, similar to what you're trying to just figure out you know, what makes everybody happy. And it's, it's different for every person. Some things are tangible. Most things are not, you know, some things are super simple. Like I am pleased by super simple stuff. It's really easy to make me happy. It's really easy to make me laugh. Um, but other people are struggling with, you know, deeper, darker stuff that we never talk about, or like, you know, me wanting to make Lancaster a happier place. I definitely confront some issues that have to do with, uh, you know, sexism, race, wage inequality, crime and violence, all of that stuff, which is just like not, not fun to think about, but there are problems that can be solved, I think. So I'm in this whole, like, how do I make things better for other people? So the world is a better place because I live in a great shiny world and I want other people to have that too. Even if it's just like a little taste. So are you talking specifically about Lancaster transplant or? Yeah. So, so basically it's a, it's a community based organization where um, we call ourselves, we're working on our mission statement and core values. Um, but we're a social enterprise where we aim to be a resource for new people in a new place. So say you move to Lancaster and you don't know where to land, you can meet up with us and make friends and connections we go and explore the our city. We tell you what's cool to do. Um, we're also just here to listen to people and what they're going through. And it kind of sucks when you move to a new place. It's like, uh, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I meet people? And if you're not in a, um, if you don't necessarily like people, it, your job and if you aren't go in school it's re it's a lot harder to meet people as an adult like we always joke about um like if you want to hang out with a friend how do you like how do you approach someone like hey do you want to go get a drink no 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 i'm not picking you up you know i just i just want friends that's all i want i want friends you know so i wanted to be able to take that out of the equation for people um and I think that's as simple as connecting people in meaningful ways. Like that's really all it's about. Um, so I started this thing in, in Lancaster and it makes me incredibly happy and it makes other people around me, like people I don't even know, they get so excited when I'm like, so, so I'm like, I'm, I do this thing. It's called Lancaster transplant. They're like, yeah, that's you. I'm like, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I'm at a point where I don't have to explain it to people anymore because there was a while where it was like, wait, so do you, are you guys like a recovery group for people who have had transplants? And oh, like, no. <laughs> like, well, do you like, you know, some people are like, that's just a weird, like a weird name. I'm like, yeah, well, that's the whole part of it. Like, we're just a bunch of weirdos who want to get together, <laughs> you know? Well, on the website, at one point you say, just look for the weirdos. That's who we are. Yeah. <laughs> you read the F FAQ section. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do this thing and this makes me happy and I don't know why. And it's really unfair for some people. But um, the other night we hosted this. Uh, we partner with a public library here to do mm. a story time after dark series where we read just stories aloud to adults, you know, and then we usually go out and hang out afterwards. Like 95% of the group was people who I know personally and are now, you know, pretty close friends or are, are just really involved in the transplant community. And then there were other, there was like one guy who, and another woman who 
had not been there before. And so I picked them out and I'm like, what is your name? I've never seen you before. And he's like, this is uncomfortable. I'm like, yeah, but you know what? We got to, it's just, you got to do it. You got to introduce yourself. Everyone introduce themselves. It's great. You're going to connect. And like this guy ended up coming out with us and having a great time afterwards and really thanking us for being so open and welcoming because there's this thing here with the whole transplants. People think we're like, if they're not a transplant, they can't hang out. And which is, I mean, it's a legitimate question, but at the same point, we're an open and welcoming community because I truly believe what's the point of, of having it closed off. You have to be this type of person to hang out, you know, like we need a place for us weirdos just to be weird and accept each other for who we are. And why do you think it was so hard for you to find that in Lancaster, but you had it elsewhere? I don't know if it was hard or easy to find in other places. It was always just like within myself. When I was living in Italy, I was the only person who went out of our whole semester abroad group who went and made friends outside of school. In Australia, I had separate groups of friends. Like I'm just like that. I need connections. I need to go out and experience that. For Lancaster, it's an open and welcoming community in some aspects, but it's also very closed off if you're not from here. So it seemed like the perfect place to sort of do something like this. And also on like a super small scale, because if I had gone to a larger city of transplants like, you know, San Francisco or Austin or even New York City or something like that, we could throw great parties and make money off of that. And that would have where our development would have stopped. But instead, we are testing out what types of things actually fulfill people and help them gain their sense of place and sense of self. So instead of just hosting mixers where, I mean, everybody really likes it. They can eat and they can drink and they can talk to people, but we host paper making workshops so people can learn how to make papers. We do family oriented events. We do field trips to local businesses. We go on hikes. There's a little bit of, of that for everyone. And I think I couldn't have done that anywhere else because Lancaster is so small. <laughs> it's a very small place to live very very intertwined everybody it's like i don't know how involved you are in philly there were like scenes in philly lancaster is an, it's like its own scene with all of its players so it's one big scene for everyone there's no yeah how does it affect because you have so many interests in so many different things that make you happy can you is it easy to reconcile the two yeah because Maybe, or maybe I'm just talking from my own perspective. Like it's one big scene for me and there's lots of different players. Like there's an upper echelon of people and things that do stuff here. And there's like all these people who are just trying to make it happen and doing everything on their own and like bootstrapping it and doing grassroots movements and all that stuff. And it's easy for me to see all of this going on because it is such a small place And as a chameleon of sorts, I can go from one space to another. And that keeps me happy because I want to know what everyone's up to. I want to know how I can help make connections from the underground to the upper echelon. But it does make certain things harder because, for example, I've, I've just recently dated someone for the first time in Lancaster, which is really hard if you know everyone here because everyone's in your business And you try to go on a date and go have dinner and everyone's hovering around you. Like, what are you doing? Who is this? They better make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be dating someone from the next town. Yeah, basically. The next town over. Oh, no, no, no. But if I date someone from York or Harrisburg, then people from Lancaster poo-poo them. Why? Because Lancaster thinks it's better than everywhere else in central Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> well... It's got things going on, but so do other places, you know, like every place is different. It's, it's not, but like, we don't, we're like, so it's almost like being super landlocked. I mean, we are landlocked here. We're so close to Philly and Baltimore and even New York city. And we don't really look at what they're doing community wise or, um, uh, policy wise, or even just culturally, <laughs> we just want to do it our own way. And I'm including myself in the big we, I guess. One of the bigger issues I have with Philly, and I love the city, and I think Philly is better than New York, because I lived yeah. in New York for two years. 
and I've actually scared people away with my Phil is better than New York conversation. So <laughs> I hope you will scare me away. It's okay. And I hope the listeners don't stop listening. <laughs> but one of the issues we have here is that I feel that we're looking too much into New York. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that has that makes it feel a little bit inferior. Yep. And I remember when I was looking for a job after grad school. I don't know. I feel like I had a master's degree. I had you know, a few years of experience and people were still trying to pin me down for a lower level job yep. and they wouldn't even respond to my emails. Whereas in New York, the people I got to respond to my emails and they were like, all right, we're not hiring, but let me look at your portfolio were amazing designers. So I don't know if, you know, that probably is a good thing for Lancaster that you're, you're beating to the tune of your own drum or <laughs> did I mix my cliches? You're beating, t- you're marching to the beat of your own drum. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> yeah, you go. So I don't know. Do you think, do you think that actually helps detracts or neither? Or? I think it does. I, I think it helps because for me in the place that I'm at and the person I want to be, the more that I m- march to the beat of my own drum, <laughs> <laughs> you got it right the first time. There you go. Yeah, I was. I had to think about it, but the more that I do that, the more good and amazing and creative stuff comes out to me, and then people are drawn to me that way. And I, I like making people think about things in a different way. And sometimes here, I feel like like the, the, the thing that detracts sometimes when you march to the beat of your own drum when you're. You're in a place that thinks a certain way, like it's this collective conscience where everybody thinks this certain way and like they, they're not used to somebody from Delaware County coming out and being like, hey, let's talk about the environment or hey, why don't we talk about having a, a shared economy or like all these things that seem totally normal to me. I kid you not. I, so many times people look at me like I have three heads. And like, they just don't understand. I know that this is not just me. It's not like I just came up with this stuff. I've seen it in other places. So why is it so hard to believe? So being in a small place, yeah, it's, it's easier to like stand out if you're different, if you're good. I've made my career very good at being out here. Um, I'm not necessarily known as a famous graphic designer, nor would I, nor would I be, but I'm, I'm known for transplant. I'm known for my work there. I'm known for my work in the community and working with other people. And I'm also known as someone you need to talk to. (laughs) You need to be in this person's, like this woman's presence. I've had so many people just email me and are like, I just want to sit and talk to you. Cool. Great. All right. And that would never happen in a place like Philly or New York, like I'd have, to, I'd have to do something completely extravagant. It's the idea that because you stand out, you're known for that. Whereas somewhere like Philly, someone like New York. See, I feel that way about Philly in contrast to New York because when I lived there, I I had such a hard time socially, such a hard time mm-hmm. in so many levels. But being back back in Philly, I'm not known the way you are known in Lancaster. But it's the idea that I I email people. It's like, oh, hey, you know, we we went to this event. I want to have coffee with you, or. Yeah. You know, I'm the one reaching out to others in this case, because it's such a small town, people were reaching out to you. Yeah. I guess in a way, it's a matter of scale and comparison. And Yeah. And you know what's funny? When we talk about it being a small town, Lancaster has over 60,000 residents. Oh, wow. So it's not, I mean, it's a small city, right? Like when, when, when I moved here, people were like, do you live in the city or, or I'm um, sorry, or the town or the country? And I'm like, well, I live in the city. It's a real city. <laughs> There are things that happen here, you know, like. <laughs> Wait, you're not in Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. What other cities are there in Pennsylvania? I know, there are cities. It's, oh, goodness, it's funny. And I, I mean, like, I laugh about being in Lancaster, but it makes so much sense for me because I love to be outside and we're so close to all this beautiful hiking and natural beauty. I do like living in the city, you know, as a 31-year-old woman you know single woman it's great i can walk downtown we have cool restaurants and bars and nightlife and things going on every night of the week so much so that it's hard for people to do it all (laughs) so interesting little city i think you should come out and visit i think everyone should come and visit lancaster it's there's something special about the soil we've talked about it a lot it's actually a, a 
I think the, I don't know which Indians, if, if it's the Lenape Indians, but it is a spiritual place. Like something about the soil in this county. It's a, it's like a spiritual place for otherworldly stuff. Well, I'm going to be in Mountville. You're going to be in Mountville? Yeah, I have a wedding there next month, so I'll have to... <laughs> The wedding's in the afternoon, so I'll I'll have to stop by Lancaster and check it out. Yeah, come out. I'll take you to all the cool places. Yes, and then I'll, I'll be with the person who needs to be known, or the person you need to know in Lancaster. You will be? Well, you. Oh, yeah, you'll be with me. Yeah, no, I was going <laughs> to say, I hope, you, I, hope you, uh, I hope you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just said this. You're the person to know in Lancaster. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> You know, like, I, I don't, I, I say that with like a grain of salt because I never wanted to, intended to be this person, but living in my, um, I got to find another word than authenticity and I'll tell you why, but maybe not on the podcast, but yeah, just, just living um, in, in my own, like coming into my own has um, made me this person people want to be around. So it's, it's pretty refreshing that I can just be myself. But it's funny because I, I always, and for the audience, like I've known Joss from college 13 years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cause when I first moved here for college, that was 13 years ago. And I don't, you've always seemed like a person who you're your own person. And, and I know, so it's, it's interesting that it's taking you life in Lancaster to get there, but yeah. I mean, maybe I've always been that person, but now it's like right in front of my face. <laughs> but now you know who you are. Whereas, yeah, exactly. Whereas when we were 19. Yeah, nobody knows who they are when they're 19. Yeah. <laughs> we're all a bunch of jerks when we're 19. <laughs> and some people are jerks when they're still in their 30s. That's so. true. You know what? I know a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not in Lancaster. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Would never, would never talk badly about anyone in Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I'm very curious, and you were talking about very deep things, finding yourself and making deep connections and having all this conversation about policy. Mm -hmm. uh, but your initial note, your initial list was very simple and very upfront about little things that make you happy. Mm -hmm. Do you find a difference between those little things versus the bigger stuff you're doing now and how they make you happy? I think that, I mean, I have to remember, because I think, well, I'm not sure if you know that I have, I have like a, a blog that I keep as well that's like personal and it's, it's about the simple things. I think there's a correlation between all those simple things and all those large things, because the large things don't actually make me happy. They make me very sad. Talking about policy and things that need to change is a lot of hard work. So it's the small, simple things that I know that I can just do when I need it or like have to remember how just drinking coffee out of my shunk mug will make me happy. Using my little French press in the morning will make me happy, you know, like getting to write, walking into my room and hearing my, uh, and I think you met my cat in college, Jack Jack. He's still around 13 years later. Oh, wow. You know, he'll just roll over and meow at me. And I'm like, yo, dude, what's up? That's fun. Yeah, I love you too. I want to lay in the sunshine. It's going to take this moment to lay in the sunshine. So I think if you don't have the little things, you can't do the big things because you can get really wrapped up in the big things and all the struggles and the layers and the complexity. And like, even when I'm, I've been doing this deep soul searching stuff for like five years now actively. And at some point you can't just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and exploring yourself. You have to give yourself a break. So, I mean, like that's what meditation's for. If you can just like sit, sit there for like five minutes and just, just be present, you know, how simple is being present and yet how deep at the same time. <laughs> So do you feel that in all the moments of greatness, you have to stop yourself and appreciate the little things? Or is that something that just happens? I do. I think sometimes I get so wrapped up and my vision gets so focused on the big things that I do have to remind myself of the little things. Like when I found this list, I was like, oh, man, right. That's right. That's right. Even when things suck, there's still good things, you know? 
So what's taking you this long? Or have you always remembered those things? You just, it just came up again. I think that I just had to cultivate that perspective of realizing what, what is meaningful to me and what is not. And like trying things and testing things. And if you don't know yourself and don't know your feelings, especially as a, like, a, I'm not saying everyone's like this. I mean, I'm a very emotional person. Um, I'm very in touch with my emotions. I think they're really, really important. I didn't understand any of them for such a long time that until I did, I didn't know what I need. It is so simple to have these small things. And I talk about it all the time as being a transplant or being homesick. Like how simple is the idea of being homesick? You can identify it, but how can you make yourself feel better? Well, the one way that I made myself feel better was just buying a, um, I was at, I was in Australia and I found a, American folk rock album with like Pete Seeger on it and just like listen to that thing nonstop for like three weeks. And then I was fine. <laughs> Stuff like that's like a super simple thing that has a lot as an emotional person. It has all these different, different meanings. So it's a little bit like that song, my favorite things. Yeah. And yeah. that I don't feel so bad. Yeah, exactly. Is there anything you actively do? You mentioned meditating, but else, uh, else from that or including that is there anything you actively do on a daily basis or on a regular basis to bring yourself back to those little things um well i try to um i mean every morning i have my it's turned into a routine of of having my coffee i think now i've made it i've like made it a practice but for a really long time i've had to test out everything that's why my lists are so long um, because of like things that make me happy because not just one thing makes me happy, like a routine in certain ways makes me happy, but then I got to switch it up because it won't have the same impact on me. So I think the, the things that like definitely make me the happy, happiest are just going out and getting grounded and going, going for a hike, something like that. Reading, reading really makes me happy. Try to do that every day. Connecting with people makes me happy, and I do that on a daily basis. So that that's always covered. <laughs> um, but also, like, giving my, myself the space to, if I feel like I need to go do something, like, go, you know, I'm feeling like I need to go get my hair cut and do something, like, super simple just to make myself feel a little bit better. Or eating that rock candy that's in my glove compartment right now would be sweet too <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> how long so, has it been there uh a month <laughs> okay so it's still good i think it's still good hopefully it won't melt i don't <laughs> know <laughs> but like that was a thing too like at some point i bought it when i was on this trip and i was like this reminds me of when i was little and i remember how excited i was i wouldn't experience that again so i bought it and i haven't done anything with it and i haven't done anything with it till i need it so it's like <laughs> Collecting those things in your tool belt of happiness that will just like, you can just do, you can just do it. So you're actively collecting them or it just I'm happens? Actually, yeah. I think I'm actively collecting and curating stuff that makes me happy. So probably if you sat down today, you would have a, a new list. Yeah. If I sat down and wrote, I think some of this stuff, I, I'm like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I have other things now that make me happy. So maybe I'll have a book of things that make me happy. Oh, maybe you should. What well, you should, you know, one of those. Um, and I've considered it for the podcast, but maybe you can do it, and I will not be offended. <laughs> like a coloring book of all the yeah. things that make you happy. Ooh, that would be fun. I, you know, I have a, a goal. Actually, other things that make me happy are like setting a goal and then accomplishing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Um, I have a goal to write a book this year. Um, and I think I found the topic and I think I found someone who wants to edit it because it's actually a very, um, it deals with trauma. So yeah. it's a little bit more of like, I need someone who's willing to dive deep into that. So I think, I think I'll be really happy if I, I've been really happy writing this thing once I decided that's what I was going to write about.
even if it's an unhappy subject, I think actively writing about it uh, makes me, releases me in some ways. So it sounds a lot of dichotomies help you be happier. You're talking now about trauma and writing about it will make you happy. Yeah. And you talk about talking the bigger conversations, but how you need the smaller things. Mm -hmm. um, is it about balance or, or? Yeah, you know, it is because it's funny that you mentioned that because one of the things that I have through all of my different research of different kinds of people and things and practices, I constantly operate on two opposite ends of the spectrum. If you believe in uh, star charts and stuff like that, uh, my natal chart, all of my signs are opposites. So like I can operate in either realms and I have to find a balance to be happy. And there's also um, Ayurvedic pra practices where you can be one of three individuals, types of individuals that relates to different um I'm get, just getting into it, so finding the words is kind of hard, but they, they represent different um, elements, like earth, wind, fire, all that stuff. I'm actually complete opposites. Like, I'm the same amount of two complete opposite types of people. So, like, for me, balance is most important, and I think that's why, you know, I have such a long list of things that make me happy because I – you know, depending on the day, I could be one way or the other, just naturally with the type of person I am. And I do tend to go to one extreme from one extreme to the other. And it's about finding the balance in between. It's like being a little gauge, you know, you have to just find it. And every time you find it, you have to remind yourself of where you are, and, and what got you there and what feelings you're feeling. And you know, remind yourself in the times that you're swinging back and forth of how you can find your center. And how does that go when you're swinging back and forth? Is that, you know, external factors that take you back and forth and you have to work to balance it or? Yeah. I mean, I think right now I'm much more aware of when I'm swinging back and forth and like kind of identifying like that's why doing so much research or and self exploration is so important because I've found it at those times where I'm going one way or the other, you know, say I'm being like super, super driven and you, and just keep going and going and going and going and wearing myself thin. Now I know that like that, where that, that behavior is going to get me, where that mind frame is going to get me, where that, you know, like at some point I'm just going to end up being a, a broken down pony, you know? <laughs> so I need to stop in that moment and find my center and whether that be going all the way to the other side of just like relaxing and laying in bed and, and like reading and sleeping lots, you know, or just sitting here in my office with, you know, the sun shining on me. I'm staring at all my lovely little plants that are in the window and it only take me, it may only take me five minutes to get that center. It's about maintaining it. That's the hardest part. Do you think there will ever be a point where that balance is just balanced and ongoing? I I think so. And I hope so. I think it's this past week with a lot of the, um, the stuff that I've experienced, like I've just been going through a lot of repressed emotions and experiencing them all over again, which is... Uh, Word to the Wise is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Came out through therapy. It was like a plug that unplugged. Then it was an eruption. So, you know, I think now that I'm fully aware of all of my layers and my complexities and natural tendencies and the stuff that drives me and the stuff that makes me happy, the stuff that makes me sad, like... I think I'm coming into a point and coming into my own as a 31 year old woman that like, I'm pretty level. Like things are cool. I'm in my center. I'm going to be grounded. And I'm really, I feel it before I know it in my brain. Um, so I'm feeling pretty excited about the future and where it's going to go. And part of that is letting go of the, the stories that we tell ourselves and the, the relationships that we have that like no longer serve us and like actually are detrimental to our, our happiness and our health 
through this whole uh, transplant thing and moving to Lancaster and like trying to find a career and trying to find myself, it's just, it, it reinforces why it's so important for people to be happy. So important <laughs> to even have just some of it, a glimmer of it, you know? Do you have a vision for what that will be when you achieve that? Hmm. For myself? For yourself, for, for others. I, I'm, I'm more interested about yourself, but if you have a bigger yeah. vision. Well, no, I, I, I mean, I think when I feel comfortable in moving forward and start moving forward in my, my vision of this thing I've created because it's so – this transplants like an extension of myself and it deals a lot with, with personal stuff and, you know, and the whole idea of happiness and giving that to other people. Like, I think once I see that really come together and well, it's not even that it's like taking the steps to get there and just believing in it. I think that's, you know, like that's when it's all going to shift and change for me. Um, but right now, like, even as we talk, feel much better about where I've been over the past year or, or two. And I'm kind of living in what, in, in like the world that I want to live in right now. It's not perfect. It never will be, but it's pretty darn close and pretty wonderful. I'm the type of person who just wants to keep, I wanted to get better and better and better. And I know things that'll, that'll get better and things that need to be solved and problems that need to be solved. And I think that's, that's part of me being a designer is the problem solving part <laughs> and visual and stuff like that. But I, I just think at some point when I can then, and I guess I'm already there. Like I've made something that makes people happy without me even trying. They can just show up and be there and I can just show up and be there. And instantly we're both happy. It's really rewarding. All right. And now we're ready for the rapid fire section. Joss, I'm going to ask you some quick questions and I would just want your gut reaction. Are you ready? Yeah. Who makes you happy? Uh, me. Uh, what? <laughs> Sorry, head left. <laughs> this, uh, this is not a narcissistic comment. It's a I know I can make myself happy comment. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what book makes you happy? Ooh, um, the Stinky Cheese Man. What is it about? It's <laughs> it's this beautifully illustrated. I actually brought it into illustration class in college. Um, it's story. It's what is it? The very stinky. Cheese Man and other tales. It's like fairy fairy tales. Mm. Like um, what's the the Three Little Pigs? That one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like f f fairy tales, kind of, but super weird. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look it up. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to look it up and link to it so that everyone yeah. can see it, and you don't have to explain it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Do you have a happy food? Oh my God! Yes, kombucha. Ooh, that counts, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody before said said something alcoholic, and I was like, yeah, it can be food, or you know, what's your favorite nourishment? <laughs> what is the happiest word you can think of? Mm, smile. What is the first happy moment you remember? Ooh, that's a good one. Huh. Come back to that one. I, 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 well, no, actually, no. You know what? Like the first thing that came to mind was getting a puppy, but I was like two. So, well, there well, you go. There getting you go. <laughs> uh, when are you the happiest? Hmm. When I'm not sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, that's the first thing that came to mind. But uh, when I'm in the woods. And what is the last thing you remember that made you happy? Oh. Hmm. I think it's this this unicorn pillow that's staring across from me that I wish you could see. <laughs> There's a unicorn pillow that I stole from my parents' house, and now it's in my office. And yes, I am a grown person. <laughs> well, if you send me a picture, I can post it on, All right, great. on the show notes. <laughs> and you need to be hogging it so that everyone can see that you're an adult woman. Awesome. Yeah. They'll be like, she looks like she's 18. You'll be like, no, she's not. It's cool. <laughs> she's just very happy and that keeps her youthful. 
She's always happy. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing everything that makes you happy. Before yep. we start wrapping it up, is there anywhere we can find you or anything you want you want to share with the audience? Um, I mean, yeah, if people are interested in learning more about transplant, they can go to LancasterTransplant.com. Pretty easy. They can email me anytime. I'm always willing to talk to people about anything and everything. Um, my email is J-O-C-E-P-A-R-K at gmail.com. So Park at gmail.com. And then if anyone's interested in reading about uh, the simple things, what, oh, this must be the place. That is the that is the blog that I called. It's just um, Joss Park dot wordpress dot com or something like that um i can send you all the links so you can find me in various ways do not send me facebook messages i will never answer <laughs> never. and we learned that i've never done that to you so we can still be friends yeah we can still be friends <laughs> actually and a side note on that i actually put out on facebook like a status that was like do not send me messages through here anymore i will not respond and somebody commented and said Oh, I hate them too. And then three days later, she sent me a Facebook message. And I saw her in real life and I was like, you know, you sent me a Facebook message, right? And she was like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that comment. I was like, wait, okay, no, no messages. <laughs> <laughs> no Facebook messages. And then I'm on strike from Facebook messages until Facebook gives me an automatic reply. I should have an automatic reply as an individual. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Now let's let's go backwards. We're going to do the intro. Okay, cool. We're going to do the intro, Jason. Sorry about this. Oh, Jason. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I will say that. I'll introduce you and then I'll ask if there is anything else you want people to know about you. That can be anything. Okay. Um, and then I will probably do a short blurb about how we're recording this one a little backwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, three, two, one. Hi, welcome to another episode of This Makes Me Happy. Today, I have my very dear friend, Jocelyn Park. Uh, Jocelyn is a writer, traveler, artist, designer, and community builder. She is a dreamer and achiever wrapped into one. Professionally, Jocelyn is a designer, project manager, and a founder of Lancaster Transplant. Jocelyn, welcome. How are you doing? Very good. Very good, Bernardo. Thank you. And is, else from what I said about you, is there anything else you want the audience to know? Um, <laughs> yes. I just wanted everyone to know how farm animals make me incredibly happy now that I live in the, um, the farming community. I just had to uh just share that that every time i drive past farm animals on my way out of the city i go goat or cow <laughs> like i'm like a two-year-old <laughs> how did we need to talk about this over the last hour we had i don't know that's what i was gonna start out with i'm sorry <laughs> but i wanted to end with it and it's interesting because an hour ago you mentioned that animals under bizarre ways make you happy and now you're shining light on your farm animal fascination <laughs> i have a question for you bernardo do you think the animals probably think the same thing of me they're like we like jocelyn and her bizarre ways that makes us happy <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure and we should ask jack jack about it oh man all right i'll get that i'll get right on that you can put that in the footnotes <laughs> <laughs> all right so we'll move on to the actual conversation we had an hour ago <laughs> And for everyone listening, you have to fast forward about half an hour, but for us, it's going backwards half an hour when Joss talk about Jack Jack. <laughs> so we're time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Time travel. <laughs> Thank you, Jocelyn, for sharing what makes me happy. One of the things I really enjoy about this project is that sometimes I get to meet wonderful new people. And other times I get to catch up with old friends and I guess you can tell by all the laughter. Um, even though I haven't talked to Joss in a while, it was as if time hadn't passed. So again, thank you very much for sharing what makes me happy. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. A uh, very special thanks to Jason Zapolo for editing this episode, to Orly Margulies for help with social media, and to Rocio Casaneda for your ongoing support. 
you can get notes on this episode on thehappypodcast.com slash episode 19. You can get more information on the project at thehappypodcast.com. We are on social media. We are on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Happy Podcast. If you like this episode and you want more people to know about it, please make sure to sign up to iTunes and leave a review because that's the best way for other people to find out about it. Also, don't forget that we have This Makes Me Happy Hour, a series of social events throughout the summer. Go to the Facebook page. There is a knitting party happening in July. We have a happy hour happening also in July. And we just secured an another happy hour in august and we might have one or two more events happening before the end of the summer don't forget if you want to send some feedback you can always go back to our website there's a contact form there i always love hearing from you i hope you enjoyed today's show and i really hope you come back next week thank you for listening